The Mitsubishi F1 caps out one of the fighter lines in the Japanese Tech Tree in War Thunder. Let's see what it's got. The earlier Mitsubishi T2 trainer was the first supersonic aircraft developed in post-war Japan and had only simplistic combat capabilities as Really, it was primarily intended to serve in the trainer role. Well, the F-1 used the T-2 as a base, but was built from the start as a dedicated combat aircraft. The T-2, which I've covered already, was heavily inspired by the European Jaguar strike jet, and that legacy carries over into the F-1 with some pretty obvious visual similarities in the basic layout of the plane. Compared to the T-2, the F-1 is upgraded in almost every way and provides significantly expanded combat capabilities over its predecessor. The F-1 carries a Japanese version of the AWG-12 radar set, which is a slight upgrade over the T-2, and also has some additional weapons pylons, compatibility with a wider range of ordnance, and the rear cockpit seat has been replaced by avionics equipment. Since the F-1 was primarily intended as a strike fighter to attack ground and naval targets, its weapon system included significant upgrades in that direction, including the ability to carry the Type 80 anti-ship missile and a few varieties of guided bombs, though none of these weapons are reflected in War Thunder yet. The F-1 first flew in 1975 and entered regular service in 1978. Although less than a hundred of these planes were built, it provided the Japanese aviation industry with an important level of experience and contributed greatly to the development and production of the F-2, which replaced it later on. The last F-1 was retired in 2006, and pretty respectable service life spanning four decades. In War Thunder, the Mitsubishi F-1 is at BR 10.3 in rank 6, at the bottom of the second fighter line. It's classified as a jet fighter, even though it was a ground attack aircraft in real life, but Gaijin has done that to a whole bunch of planes, so it's not unusual. The aircraft's weapon system is focused around the JAWG-12 radar set, which provides a pulse Doppler mode, boresight targeting, multiple dish angles, and a full ballistics computer for all of the plane's air-to-ground ordnance. For loadouts, the F-1 has options for up to four air-to-air -air missiles and a pretty good selection of rockets and dumb bombs. The ability to carry four air-to-air -air missiles is one of the primary upgrades over the T-2 that ends up mattering in War Thunder and gives a bit more credibility to using the F-1 in a pure fighter role. The missiles it gets to start are the AIM-9B, the same basic entry-level heat seeker that you've used before. The mid-level upgrade is the AIM-9E, which, in my opinion, isn't a great weapon, and although it's an upgrade from the B, is still really only a stopgap until you get the AIM-9P. The AIM-9P will be your primary air-to-air -air weapon as soon as you unlock it, and while it isn't the best sidewinder in the game, it's generally good enough on a plane like the F-1. This plane also gets a version of the M61 Vulcan cannon with 750 rounds of ammunition. Even with its high cyclic rate, this gives the F-1 a pretty generous supply of ammo and lets you have a little bit of flexibility in how you attack targets. Just keep in mind that it's an electrically operated cannon and needs to spool up for about a quarter of a second before it begins to shoot after you hit the trigger. Not a big problem, just remember to fire a fraction of a second early. The flight performance of the F-1, like most other planes, has some high points and low points. Generally, it has good speed and acceleration past the, like, low to medium end of the power curve, and a decent rate of climb. However, in sustained turn fights, it can tend to lose energy pretty quickly, especially in prolonged vertical maneuvers. Its maneuverability is generally good enough to hold its own through a couple of basic turns of maneuvers, but once it loses its speed, things can get bad pretty quickly. 
dedicated turn fighters like an F-5E or a J-35 are going to fly circles around the F-1 most of the time, but once you get the feel for the plane's performance and its maneuverability limits, you probably won't make a fool out of yourself too often. Now, another important reminder is that, like most other jets, if you load up on ordnance, it's going to significantly decrease your flight performance in basically every way. So, just something to keep in mind. Now, flying the F-1 out in emissions actually gives you some pretty good options for what you want to do. The only real issue holding it back is the lack of countermeasures. Like with most other planes without chaff, I tend to suggest flying the F-1 at lower altitudes, where you can use ground cover to greater effect against longer-range semi-active radar missiles and stuff. But the ordnance layout options, the full ballistics computer, and four air-to-air -air missiles let you fly the F-1 as a ground pounder or as a dedicated fighter. Both roles work pretty well if you load out for them. Now, the full ballistics computer and decent loadouts also give the F-1 a credible role as close air support. For whatever reason, I personally had a really hard time getting hits with the F-1's rockets, so I tended to favor the bombs most of the time with the F-1. The good news is, both the rockets and the bombs have good punching power, so if your aim is solid, you should be able to take out ground targets pretty effectively. Again, though, no countermeasures, so watch for missile spam. Also, its turning circle can be kind of wide, especially with ordnance, so its utility may depend a bit on the map layout and your ability to line up high-speed combat passes. Visually, the F-1's a pretty decent-looking plane. Sadly, it doesn't get the blue impulse paint job of the T-2, but you can find that on Live.WarThunder. The two default paint jobs it gets are okay, and you probably won't mind looking at this jet in the third-person view. Landing the F-1 is broadly similar to landing the T-2. You can drop flaps at about 440 kilometers an hour, and landing gear a bit higher than that even. Now, touching down at high speeds is generally pretty easy, and the landing gear is relatively strong. The plane has both an arrestor hook that you'll never get to use, and also a drag chute. So, even if you tend to do pretty hot landings, you should be able to slow down pretty easily and, you know, not have to worry about running out of runway. The cockpit is a bit of a mixed bag. The forward visibility is pretty good. Rearward visibility is non-existent. You get a radar B-scope in the cockpit, which is good, but it's a bit lower than I'd prefer, and you don't get a visible radar warning receiver. Overall, despite the good forward visibility, I felt this cockpit was a bit below average for a jet at this tier. To close out on the Mitsubishi F-1. This plane has a pretty good selection of multi-role weapon loadouts, giving it credible weapons for both fighter and ground attack missions. It has good engine power once you get out of the lower end of the power curve. It has a pulse Doppler radar set, a generous supply of ammo for its gun, and at least average maneuverability for a plane of this tier. However, the F-1 doesn't get any countermeasures, it bleeds energy in sustained turn fights, and it has a below-average cockpit with no rearward visibility. The final verdict on the Mitsubishi F-1 is that this plane is a good follow-on to the T-2 and outperforms it in basically every way. This is a credible jet for both air combat and ground pounding, and if we ever get anti-ship missiles in War Thunder, the F-1 will get even better. As always, thanks for watching.